Hi, so these quick tests are really like cut down GCSEs by grade. So it's worthwhile having a go at them. If you're aiming for a grade four or a grade five or a grade six, then they're all on three minute maths and also on the YouTube channel as well. Please let me know how you get on in the comments. I'll look forward to seeing you inside the video. Okay, so this particular test is aimed at roughly grade three to four. It's going to give you some core skills to be able to use to approach your GCSEs. So the first one is a fairly typical type of question where we've got uh, somebody planning a holiday. And the important thing here is that this is the cost of the holiday for each person. And we're looking for five days. Now per day, that means over a seven day period, that's going to be £420. So just be a little bit careful with that one. So the total cost of the holiday for one person is going to be £120 plus the £60 per day which is actually now going to be £420 and then we've got £225 spending money so that will give you a total cost for one person of £765. Okay so the question is actually asking for five people so for five people we're going to take £765 and we're going to multiply it by five. Now you might do this slightly differently to me however uh, absolutely no problem with that this is just the way that I do it so therefore I would in this particular one get an answer of £3,825. Okay let's move on then to question number two so we've got to change 23 meters to centimeters well in one meter there is a hundred centimeters so one meter equals 100 centimeters. I've got 23 meters so therefore I'm going to multiply by 23 and that's going to give me 2300 meters and 2300 meters would be the answer to that particular question. Okay let's move on to the next one then change 250 meters to kilometers. Well again I would put equivalent so there are a thousand meters equal to one kilometer. I'm looking for 250 meters and that's going to equal if I divide by a thousand 0.25 kilometers and that would be the answer to question number three. Okay, let's move on then to question number four. Now, question number four is a fraction question, so working out three quarters of 254. What we're going to do first is work out one quarter, and I'm going to take 254, and I'm going to divide by four. Now, if I do that, that will give me one quarter, and again, you might do it slightly different to me. I'm going to use the bus stop method. The problem with it is that I've got a remainder, and that remainder is going to be 20, 4 since 20 go 5, so therefore I know that 1 quarter equals 63.5. So therefore if I want 3 quarters I'm going to get 63.5 and multiply it by 3. Now when I do that I get 1905. Now you'll notice that I've missed the decimal point off. I do that quite deliberately when I'm multiplying decimals and then I'll put the decimal point in afterwards. So that would give me a finish question at 190.5 and that would be the answer to question number four. Just be careful when you are multiplying decimals, particularly decimals with a decimal point. Okay, let's move on then to question uh, part B. 65% of 460. Well, what I do know is that 10% is going to equal 46. So therefore, I need to work out 60%. So if I do 46 multiplied by 6, just in the corner, that's going to give me 276 and therefore 60 percent is going to equal 276. Now 5%, remember I'm looking for 65, is going to be half of the 10%. So it's therefore going to be 23. And therefore if I want to add up the full 65%, I'm going to add my two middle numbers there and that's going to give me 299, which is the answer to part B of this particular question. Okay, let's move on to part C. Now, I mentioned before about multiplying by decimals. The easiest way of doing this is to multiply 1, 2, 4, multiplied by 89. Now, again, you might use partitioning method or something like this. Okay, the
the way that I do it is uh, the way that I was taught originally. Um, it's the way that is taught actually an awful lot in schools, and that should give you one one zero three six I've not drawn that particularly well okay but it'll give you some idea now again I've missed the decimal point so therefore I need to put the decimal point back in two places and that's going to be give me one one zero point three six and that would be the answer to part C for two marks okay let's move on then to a ratio question I've got 32 to 48 in its simplest form well what I would do is start with 32 to 48 and then I'm going to divide both sides by 2 it just seems to me to be a little bit easier to do it this way I'm going to get 16 to 24 now I know that 8 will divide into 16 and into 24 so if I divide both sides by 8 that's going to give me 2 and divide that by 8 it's going to give me 3 so in in its simplest form is going to be 2 to 3 and that will give you two marks for that particular question. Okay, so we're moving through this at a fairly fast pace. If you're not sure about anything, please do stop the video, um, put something in the comments, and I'll send you through a link to a playlist. Okay, so a map has a scale of 1 to 30,000. Distance between two points on the map is 6 centimetres. So 1 centimetre on the map is equal to 30,000 centimetres in real life. So therefore, 6 centimetres on the map is going to be 6 times bigger. So if I multiply that side by 6, I actually get 1, 8, 0, and then 3 zeros at the end. So it's 180,000, and that's in centimetres. I need to convert that to metres, so I'm going to take it a step at a time. To convert it to metres, that means I divide by 100, so that's going to be 1800 metres, and then if I want to move from metres to kilometres, I'm going to divide by 1000, and that's going to give me 1.8 kilometres, and that is the answer to this particular question for three marks. A little bit tricky that one, but if you can work through centimetres to metres to kilometres, it's not too bad. Okay, let's move on then to drawing a line on a graph. Now, on this particular one, I've got values of x. You can see uh, from minus 10 through to 10. I've also got values of y. So I need to uh, create a little grid. So what I would normally do with these is start with 0, because that's much easier. So when I put uh, 0 into y equals 2 times 0 minus 1, what I actually get is going to be minus 1. So the value of y is going to be minus 1. Let's have a look at what happens when the value of x is, say, 5. I'm going to have y equals 2 times 5 minus 1. Well, 2 times 5 is 10. 10 minus 1 is going to be 9, so therefore y is going to be 9. Let's have a look then at uh, minus 5, okay? A little bit trickier because we've got a negative, so it's 2 times minus 5 minus 1. Well, 2 times minus 5 is going to be minus 10, and minus 1 is going to be minus 11. And then really it's just a case of plotting these points on the graph and then actually drawing the straight line. So I've got 0 minus 1 there. I've got 5, 9 at the top here, and I've got minus 5, minus 11 at the bottom here. Now I'm going to try using a ruler. Uh, let's see how we get on with using a ruler, particularly on a live video. But, well, that's not too bad. Okay, so I'm just going to draw the line, and hopefully that will give you some idea of what this looks like when it's completed. And that would be the answer to that this particular question. Okay, hopefully that's all right for you. Let's move on then to question number two. Eight and question number eight is a proportion type question. Uh, Josh needs 40 grams of sugar to make 15 biscuits. He also needs, and this is where is a little bit of English is a little bit uh, difficult to follow, but just take your time with this. So four times as much flour as sugar and one and a half times as much butter as sugar. So let's ignore at the moment that he's going to make 60 biscuits. Let's just look at how much he needs to make the 15 biscuits. Okay. Well, we've actually said that he needs 40 grams of sugar that's absolutely fine and then he needs four times as much flour as sugar well four times 40 is going to be 160 grams of flour 
Okay, and then he needs one and a half times as much butter as sugar. So it's one and a half times 40 is going to give me 60 grams of butter. I now he's going to make 60 biscuits, which is actually going to be four times as much ingredients. So therefore, I just need to multiply each of these by four. So rather than having 40 grams of sugar for 15 biscuits, I've got 160 grams of sugar for 60 biscuits. And then I've got 160 multiplied by four. And again, you might need to do a little calculation as I did, but for the sake of the video, it's easier just to write it down as 640 grams of flour. Okay, and then also 240 grams of butter. Okay, and that would be the answer to this particular question. Hopefully that's okay for you. Let's move on then to the final two questions on this particular worksheet. Please do stop the video, have a go at each of these questions. Okay, so what I'm going to do with this one is I'm going to start with 7p plus 30 equals 9. Now my problem is I've got uh, 7p and then I've got this plus 30. So what I'm going to do is minus 30. And that will get rid of it for me on the left hand side. That will give me 7 7p equals minus 21. And then I need to divide through by 7, because don't forget, I've got 7 lots of p. So therefore, if I divide through by 7, I get p equals minus 3. And that would be the answer to that particular question. OK, let's look at the very final question. The film starts at 7.45 p.m. The film lasts 98 minutes. What time does the film finish? Well, probably the, for me, the easiest way these is to do some uh, timeline. So start with 7.45. And then if I let the film run for 60 minutes, that's going to give me 8.45. Don't forget this is p.m. And then I've got still got 38 minutes to go. So I'm going to add another 30 minutes here, and that's going to give me 9.15. And then another 8 minutes on top of that, so that's plus 8 minutes. And that's going to be a finish time of 9.23. So therefore, the answer to the final question will be 9.23 p.m. OK, so I hope that was useful for you. Please do subscribe to the channel, add a comment if you're not sure about anything. I'll always come back to you. I look forward to seeing you inside the next video.